Hello everyone, this is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, and one of the founding partners of the Dividend Kings. And with this video, I'm going to take a look at five of the constituents of our Fortress portfolio, because I have a couple of comments there. Number one is, the portfolios that we're presenting on the Dividend King site are recommended portfolios that provide what we would consider to be research candidates that fit whichever portfolio it's posted in. As it relates to the Fortress portfolio, we're looking for impeccable quality, the highest quality companies our minds can conceive. And I would argue that every company currently in the Fortress portfolio meets that standard. However, what I am concerned about, because I'm also known as Mr. Valuation, and I'm kind of the designated valuation policeman for the Dividend Kings, is that some of these holdings have become overvalued. And as such, they are momentum plays. And I'm going to be talking about that more as I go through the video. But a momentum play is a company that's trading at valuation significantly above what its fundamentals would suggest and support. But nevertheless, the stock is very popular and it has momentum. And that can run for a long period of time. So you can make a lot of money in momentum plays. I just want our subscribers to be cognizant of the risk they're taking in order to get that. And to me, as I look at the five companies I'm going to be covering here are Echolab, Microsoft, Boeing, Texas Instruments, and Colin Frost Bankers. I have them listed here in order of highest to lowest P.E. ratios. And I want you to notice four of them have P.E. ratios above 20, with Echolabs having a current P.E. ratio of 35. And what that does is the inverse of the P.E. ratio is the earnings yield. And what that translates into are earnings yields of only 2.8% for Echolabs, 3%. 0.37% for Microsoft, slightly under 4% for Boeing, just over 4% for Texas Instruments, and 7.5% for Collins and Frost. Now, I've often talked about the fact that I consider a 6.5% to 7% earnings yield as kind of my minimum standard because first of all it represents the long-term 200-year average rate of return that stocks are capable of delivering. But let me put this earnings yield into perspective a little bit. What earnings yield really means is it's saying that if you owned 100% of the company in question and that company paid you out 100% of their earnings, those earnings would represent a yield on your investment of X. In the case of Echolabs, it would only be 2.8%. So the real question is, do you want to take the risk of owning an equity that could fluctuate broadly over time, and when the company's operating results are only providing you a yield under 3%? That's just one example using the Echolabs. So I want to go through these companies very quickly here with you now and look at why I consider these companies overvalued. And I'm going to run each of them through various valuation methodologies that I personally like to utilize when I'm trying to value a common stock. So I'm going to start out with Echolab. And I want to make a point about this company for whatever reason. And this is something I call this a tool to think with, fast graphs. For whatever reason, it's very clear by looking at this graphic here that the market has valued this stock at a premium valuation historically. The normal price earnings ratio for this company has averaged over 25 going all the way back to 2000. But I do want you to notice this blue line then is a PE ratio of 26.87 and over this time frame. It would adjust slightly if I change it. I want you to notice that the valuation is now much higher so it's trading at a 35 PE ratio and you can clearly see that even given the abnormally high valuation that the market likes to apply, this company is very overvalued on that basis. So let's move to operating cash flow, which serves two purposes when you're evaluating dividend growth stocks, in my opinion. And Dividend Kings is all about dividend growth stocks. One is the operating cash flows give you a perspective of whether the dividend's being covered. And you can see that this high quality, A minus rated company with only 40% debt covers their dividends like a blanket with their operating cash flow. But once again, you see a stock that consistently traded at about a 50 times operating cash flow multiple. That's the multiple of this orange line. And then it started really separating itself in 2013. And that momentum has continued for all these years. So what I'm saying is there's really no real fundamental value of supporting this stock price here, even if you look at the normal high valuations that the market's applied. And then last but not least, in this particular example, I'm going to take a look at EBITDA, which is a softer form of cash flow. It's an earnings kind of cash 
cash flow combination, if you will. Once again, you see a very consistent normal price to EBITDA of about 11.46. And all of a sudden now we're trading at an 18.5 times EBITDA. But the stock has momentum. Let's um, let's check it and get a real quick quote here on Seeking Alpha. The stock is actually up a little bit today. So, you know, it continues to run and that's clear. And, I, and I'm not denying that. But the point is, as I mentioned my musical chairs comment in the written portion, you know, this is the chair. This is what the fundamental support, the valuation that the fundamental support as they have all this history here. And right now we have a big separation here. So you've got the risk of that, you know, continuing for some time. It, it might be the opportunity, but it can also change at any moment just based on a change in sentiment. And likewise, we have Microsoft. Microsoft just reported earnings. Their multiple of EBITDA is not too bad lo looking here. If I look at the current quotation on Microsoft, they just reported earnings and they had a nice fourth quarter earnings report. So the company's up about 2% today. When you look at it from an EBITDA point of view, you can see that it's now trading at a much higher multiple of EBITDA than historical norms. There was a long time back here coming out of the recession where it traded at very low multiples of EBITDA. And that possibly always exists. So let's take a look at it from a standpoint going back to like I did with Echo Labs. Let's look at it from a standpoint of adjusted operating earnings because here's where I think you can really see some of the momentum discrepancies. Similar to Echo Labs, this company has historically traded at a high multiple, but that number is somewhat distorted by the irrational exuberant period where the PEs got ridiculous. But here is about the PE ratio that we currently have now. This is oh, it's a PE of 35. We're at 29. I might try to find one a little lower than that for you in, as far as this video goes. Try to find something as close to that 29 PE as I can here. There's 30. Oh, I'm sorry. That's 34 again. Anyway, bottom line is if you get high PEs like this, you can end up with long periods of time where you get very, very poor performance. This is a little higher. You know, my starting point was a little higher than Microsoft is currently trading at. But my point is this was a period where the company did well, but there was very, very little performance. As I look at this company from all these metrics, once again, I've, I've got you know great dividend coverage. If I look at operating cash flow or even free cash flow, Microsoft is definitely covering their dividend. However, I also want to point out that their yield is only 1.35% right now. So all of this performance that we're seeing here is really a function of this great momentum that the company has been going through. If I put their dividend yield up here and look at it from a perspective of you know what their historical dividend yield have been. These are fiscal year-end dividend yields, which ends in June. Here, the, the company was yielding 2.69%, 2.66%. You can see when the valuations were higher, the dividend yield was about 1.37%. That was during a period where we had poor performance. We only got a dividend yield of 1.35. And last year, we ended up with a dividend yield of 1.8. But the company, this so far, you know, for the last month or so, has even appreciated more. I do consider Microsoft approaching the dangerous overvaluation level, but it has great momentum and it's one of the few AAA rated companies on the planet. I'd cut my arm off to own this stock, but I don't like buying it at this level. Now, the next one I want to look at, I think, is I'll stay in the technology sector. Let's go ahead and look at Texas Instruments. And it's kind of very, very similar to what I'm showing you with Microsoft. I just really want you to see, that, you know, you're looking at historical reality here. These are real numbers. And, you know, on an operating cash flow, the company's above its operating cash flow, but we have an expectation for a drop in operating cash flow. That's kind of a red flag to me. In other words, that's the kind of thing that can change sentiment as we saw happening back here. So let's go ahead and take a look at operating earnings for a moment. Look at what the valuation looks like based on operating earnings. Well, once again, we see what I call these momentum plays. The normal PE here is totally distorted because this was a tech stock where we had crazy, like Microsoft, we had crazy valuations historically. But even if I shorten this time frame dramatically and then go ahead and put the normal PE back in here, you can see that the stock is trading above its historical normal PE. And we are expecting a down year this year. So 
even though this stock has great momentum, let's go ahead and check the quote. You know, this one is down a little bit today. You need to beware when a stock's fundamentals are starting to show a little wear and tear. This is a quasi-cyclical company, Texas Instruments is. In other words, it has periods where the earnings drop or flatten, and consequently, stock price tends to react to that. So be very careful with a company trading at this kind of valuation. The next stock I want to look at, to me, is a real conundrum. It's Boeing, and they've had their 737 MAX issues. We're all, I think, pretty much aware of those. If we look at Boeing from a fundamental value, we can see that it's, you know, very commonly a 15 multiple stock. It does trade at a modest premium. It is a cyclical company, or what I would call quasi-cyclical. We are expecting its earnings to be down, and the company did report today that they're going to have essentially take a major charge off as a result of this um, 737 MAX grounding that they've had, and somehow the market likes that, so the stock is actually up $14, or just almost 4% today. But this is, again, a pure momentum play with a lot of issues you know, that are potentially happening. My point is, Boeing is not cheap here. It's, it's certainly an expensive stock, regardless and not even withstanding the issues that the company has. And then finally, I'm going to take a look at Colin and Frost here. It's one of the newest additions to the Fortress portfolio, because what I want to do is just contrast that from a standpoint of its valuation. What we have here, again, is a company that historically trades at around, you know, between this 15 and 16 times earnings. When it's gotten disconnected from that, like above that in the past, it's had, you know, a reversion to the mean. You can see the price tracks earnings very well. It was overpriced just a little bit ago, like some of the ones that we're looking at now are. And the company has flattened, has had a forecast of flat earnings for the next couple years. But we've got a real nice dividend yield, an A minus rating. And because it's a bank, we don't report debt to capital. But the point is, you can buy this stock at a very inexpensive valuation today. And I want to point out the earnings yield is about 7.56%. So, you know, as we present these portfolios to you, always think beyond just the fact, just because we're showing them to you doesn't mean we're saying they're great investments. These are all fortress companies for sure. However, I think the valuations of some of these stocks are suspect and they're pure momentum plays and they still have momentum and they can keep that momentum them for some time, but you don't want to be one of the people without a chair when the music stops. And right now, I, these companies, as good as they're doing, and they are great companies that are performing well, the market has you know appreciated these stocks more than we do. That's one of my old jokes about the definition of appreciation is when the other person appreciates what you have more than you do. And right now, the market appreciates four of these five companies a lot more than I do. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carville saying thanks for watching. I hope this gives you some perspective on valuation and momentum stocks.